promise keeper, a light. How about a light in the dark? Does anybody know God to be a Jesus? Hallelujah, Jesus. serve a great God, serve a mighty God, serve a way-making God. Anybody know him to be a way-maker? Uh, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are here. Turn the lives around. interested in what he's doing in you than what he's doing in here. And if and if somebody is saying, well, I wish he'd hurry up, I wish you'd sow into this moment right here. There's one greater than me and he's preaching already. He has opened up the altar already. He's breaking up the follow ground already. So I would that you would just take a few seconds and just get into the water.
Matthew chapter 13. give y'all a little bit of this. We'll, we'll be in it next week as well. So I want to I want to equip you for this moment right here. Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to start reading that verse number one. Feel free to just sort of read along. That day, Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea. Large crowds began to gather to him. So he got out into a boat and sat down in the boat. And the whole crowd was standing there on the beach. And he spoke many things to them in parables saying, Behold, the sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate it up. Others fell on rocky places where they did not have much soil, and immediately they also sprang up. Because they had no depth of soil. Lord Jesus. I'll work on this next week. But when the sun had risen, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell among the thorns and the thistles. And the thorns came up and choked them out. And others fell on good soil. And they yielded a good crop. Some even a hundredfold, but some sixty and some thirty. He who has an ear, let him hear. He who has an ear, let him hear. You have to have an ear that's sensitive to the word of God. This isn't, this isn't just mean ears on, on, on your head, ears attached to your face. It meant, it meant a spiritual ear. And I want God to open up my spiritual ear today. The Bible says that faith come by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. He who has an ear, let him hear. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We give you glory. Thank you for being in this moment, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being in this place, God. Lord, help me equip our body for this moment. There's so many broken people here, Lord Jesus. Help me to speak a word that equips them for this moment, God. I pray over this entire sanctuary. Blessings, 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 blessings. Some 100 fold, some 60 fold, some 30 fold. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. You can have your seat. Casey, stay with me. I'm 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 not gonna I'm not gonna be up here long. So this particular um this particular uh, scripture in Bible is commonly taught, okay? And y'all, I might move around a little bit. I, I might, I, I feel the need to get close to y'all, so I might just go ahead and do this. <laughs> Step on off the stage. Um, this particular scripture, this this passage in scripture, it, it, it turns out to be uh, what we call parable. Somebody say parable. Yeah. Pastor Dante, what's a parable? Well, we talked about this. A parable is where Jesus uses something that you do understand to teach you something that you couldn't possibly understand. He said, we see now in a mirror dimly, but, but later on we will see 
fully, and oftentimes, even I do this, we get into a place where we think we fully understand the word of God, but the word of God cannot be fully comprehended by us in our human form. So we get glimpses. Somebody say glimpses. And oftentimes what, what, what God is doing in your life is he's just showing you a glimpse of what he really, of where he really wants to take you. Some of y'all call these dreams, intuition, hopes, but, but what they are is they're glimpses into your future. And I, I, I'm praying today that God starts to bright, oh, hear me right here, that God starts to illuminate your mind, illuminate your heart, and give you glimpses into what he wants to do. Listen, do you know you serve a God who wants to do good for you, wants to do right by you? He, he said, I would that you would prosper as your soul prosper and be in good health as your soul prosper. You serve a God who cares about you. He wants to see you prosper. And so what he will do is give you glimpses into a future that you can't comprehend. He'll give you ideas and thoughts in spaces that you can't comprehend. And what you have to do is re re receive, oh, hear me right here. You have to be able to receive the glimpse and hold on to it. And, and this is what faith looks like. Faith is a glimpse into my future that I took a picture of. Faith is a glimpse. I got a glimpse into my future and I took a picture of it. And God said to hold on to that picture. That's why he says now faith is the substance. The substance. Substance is something, right? It's something that I can hold on to. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. See, I caught a glimpse of it. And so I had to take a Polaroid picture of it, put it in my pocket. Some of y'all, y'all not... It's anachronistic for you because you don't remember like having to wait on those pictures. You get instant gratification when you take a picture. You take a picture and then you look at it and it's there on the screen. You can decide whether it's good or bad, whether you should take another picture. You do that. This is what you do right now. You look at the screen, but that's not how faith works. Faith works like a Polaroid <laughs> where you take a picture. <laughs> And then something comes out. And what you got to do is hold on to hope. That it turned it out. Oh, hear me right here. The way you saw it in the viewfinder. You got to hold on to hope that it turns out. And sometimes, listen, if you want, <laughs> if you really want to see it soon, you got to give it a little. Y'all with me today? You got to give it a little. So, and some of y'all, this is, this is where you are in faith. You in this shaking stage right here because I know what I saw. Oh, hear me right here. I know what I saw, Pastor Kevin. I know what God said he was going to do in my life. And I believe that I received what I saw, but I got to do some sh You know, this motion right here, it'll shake some things off. Shake some people off. This motion right here, it'll change some things in your life. You got to have... Because I saw a picture into my future. So what Jesus is doing with the parable, he, he is giving you a glimpse into your future. Now, when you look at the word of God, I want to teach you a, a couple of things real quick. I, I, I promise I'm going to let you out of here. I, I promise. I'll be here again next week. It'll be okay. <laughs> but whenever you read the word, you got to read it for a couple of things. You, you're not just reading it for practicality. Okay, that's just one. You read the word for practicality. Okay, so that means you look at the word and, and you, uh, you assume that what was said in the word, what was said in the graphe, this is what we call the graphe, the written word, what was said in the word is true and accurate. But the word of God is more than just a practical book. It's not a self-help book, although it will, self -help, it will help yourself. <laughs> it's not a self-help book. So when you read the word of God, and particularly your teachers, hear me right here, you, 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 you have to excavate, you have to excavate the word. And what you're looking for is a few things. The one, one of the things that you're looking for is practicality. Yes. Thou shall not kill means thou shall not kill. Thou shall not fornicate means 
We're not that new. <laughs> thou shalt not commit adultery means thou shalt not. It's practical. It's practical. But we're not just looking for the practical. When we read the word, we're also looking for the cultural. Now, this means something in relation to the culture, what was going on 2,000 years ago. And that's why it gives you the setting, whether we were in Rome or whether we were in Jerusalem. or we, Because it matters where you are when you hear a certain word. <laughs> if you hear a word in one place, it means one thing. You hear that same word in a different place, it can mean a totally... Are y'all with me today? So what you got to understand is what, what God is saying, not, not just what he's saying practically, but also what he's saying culturally in relation to the scripture you read. Also, uh, you got to understand the historicity of it. So you're looking for the word, and, and, and historically, what does that mean? In the time, because it also matters when, when you receive a word. Do are y'all with me today? I don't want to go deep. I'm trying to help you right here. But it also matters when you receive a word. Oftentimes a prophet will prophesy to you and tell you you're going to be the head and not the tail. You're going to be above and not beneath. And you're still working that water burger. And you got to know the word is true even though you went right back to flipping. Are y'all with me today? You got to understand the historical context of it. And so I want to give you a lot of that, but I, I need you to understand something because when you read the word, if you read it for these things, and there's, there's a couple of other ones I'll give them to you next week, but there, if, when you read it for these things, you, you get a few things. Okay, the first thing you get is education. Somebody say education. So I'm reading the word and I'm reading, I'm reading it for education. The second time I read it, I'm reading it for information. Information is something that I'm supposed, now this is supposed to stick to me, okay? Now, it, it, the third time I read it, I'm reading it for illumination. Now something spiritual should happen. That's why you got to keep reading and keep reading and keep reading. You can't keep approaching every time you read the Bible, you think it means what you see on the page. No, no, no. You're waiting for God to speak to, oh, hear me right here. You got to be praying for God to speak. Even when you come to this place, don't just listen to the word I'm saying. You got to think about your cultural context. You got to think about your historical context. You got to think about your practical context and how the words is applicable. Are y'all with me today? So I read it for illumination. Now, illumination always brings revelation. As I'm enlightened to what a word means, then all of a sudden it revelates about my life. Does that make sense? As I, as I figure out what the context of this thing is, it opens up a whole new thing in my life. And that brings revelation. And then revelation brings transformation. Information, education, illumination, revelation, transformation. Are y'all with me today? Now we can talk about our text. Because I need you to understand that when Jesus says there is a there is a sower. Somebody say there is a sower. When Jesus says there is a sower, I need you to understand that he's talking about you. There is a sower. Somebody say there is a sower. Now, now, now understand something. When you when you add the word er to a verb, what 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 you're doing is assigning that verb to a person. Some of us are, some of us sow, so we are sowers. Some of us eat, so we are. Some of us run, so we runners. Some of us swim. Now, how do I get identified with that verb? How is that verb attached to me? Well, do it enough. When you do it enough, all of a sudden you become known. I, I've said this before. You're not known by what you believe. You're known by what you do. Now your beliefs should define your actions. But you can't tell me you believe one way and do another way. I'm going to say this is who you are. You are a smoker. You are a drinker. 
And I only want to be defined by what God says about me. So when you add an ER, oh, uh, hear me right here. When you add an ER to a verb, I want it to be about what God says about, about me. So this is so significant because he calls this man a sower. There is a certain sower. And you might be able to identify with this if you got some seeds in the ground. I'm looking for two or three people who said, Baby, Pastor Dante, I got some seeds in the ground. So when he says a sower, he's talking, go ahead and attach that to me. I got some stuff going on. I got some seeds that haven't sprouted yet that I sowed and I sowed and I sowed and I want to be known for. I want to be known for what I've done perpetually. I want to be known for what I've done perpetually. And so God said there is a sower. Now, if you are not known for sowing, you would just skip over this. And I need you to identify with this particular sower because God is trying to move you. He's trying to transform you. He's trying to push you into a new place. And he's saying there is a sower who scatters some seed. Now this is what I want to talk about today for five minutes. Can I have five minutes? <laughs> five, 10, 15, 20. That's good. That Ebony save yours for next week. What is seed? Let me start with what seed is not. Seed is not source. Seed is not source. Somebody say that. Seed is not source. Seed is resource. Okay. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void. God stepped into, some of y'all heard this before. God stepped into nothingness. Tohu va bohu. He stepped into nothingness and the Bible said that he began to speak. Now, if you want to see something out of nothing, you're going to have to emulate God right here and you're going to have to speak to your life. You're going to have to speak to your circumstance. You're going to have to speak. If you want to see something where there's nothing, you're going to have to open up your mouth. Now, I'm daring some people right here who are switching from eaters to sowers to just take a few minutes, a few seconds and open up their mouth and say, God, you are good and your mercies endure forever and I'm so glad that you're going to change my life change my circumstance change you're going to have to open your mouth my mama used to say it like this a closed mouth I thought she was being smart I didn't know she was a prophet because in the book of Genesis when God wanted to see something he opened up his mouth. I want to challenge you again. That's why you need some word down in your heart. That's why you need a praise song down in your heart. I don't care if you can sing or not. You need a poor, you need a way maker down in your heart. You need a way maker, miracle worker. Care if you can sing, you need to be, you need to release that into the atmosphere and watch what God does because somebody opened up their mouth and spoke a word. And when there was nothing, Tohu Vavohu, he stepped into nothing and spoke a word. You walk in your kids' rooms, nothing. Tohu va vohu. Why don't you just start pronouncing it? You are the head and not the tail. I believe God has, a, you are a prince, you are a royalty. Even while they sleep, cause they are gonna think you're weird. You are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation chosen. God has a plan for you. He's going to use your life. He's going, what you doing mama? Nothing. Because I want to speak where there is nothing and see something. So God begins to speak and all of a sudden things start appearing. The Bible says he, he, he said to the light, he said, let there be light. There was no light. He said, let there be light and the light showed up. The Bible says he separated the light from the darkness, called the light day and the darkness night. And then it was the first day the Bible says he looked at it and said, well, that's good. <laughs> See, it's okay to pat yourself on the back every once in a while. That's good. I made some gumbo the other day. I stepped back. I said, that's good. <laughs> and he saw that it was good. 
<laughs> I, I can dig a little deeper right there because the, the word saw right there does not mean to see with your natural eye. It means he experienced it. It means he tasted it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is... He didn't just see it. He, he experienced the light. Called the light day in the darkness night. He said, this is good. This is, this is, this is good. I'm in my bag right now. And he moved on. So he did something, and this, this starts happening when he, when, he, when he starts creating the animals, the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the trees, the green, everything that is alive. He says something very significant about it. I need you to hear me right here. The Bible says, and let it produce after its own kind. Let it produce after its own kind. Let it produce after its own kind. What does that mean, Pastor Dante? It means that whatever, whatever I created, whatever I created was created from nothing. But now since it is something, it has the ability to produce something. Everything that is something has the ability to produce something. Oh, I'm going to say it over here to this. Everything that is something has the ability to produce something. Now, some of y'all won't hear me right here because people keep telling you you ain't nothing. That you won't have nothing and you won't be nothing. But I want to tell you, if you're hearing my voice right now, you are a something. And that means you are something serious because the ability to reproduce the ability to after your own kind it's alive on the inside of you. So that everything created was created with this, this, this thing on the inside of it called seed. Somebody say seed. I was created with seed on the inside of me. Now, Pastor Dante, what, what does that have to do with anything? Well, it's very, very important that you understand what a seed is. Because a seed is not a seed. A seed is a container. It is a capsule that contains capacity for the future. A seed is not just a seed. It is a capsule that contains capacity for the future. Okay? So, so a seed is a seed. Oh, hear me right here. Remember back in the day, man, this is, this is again, this might go. We used to make time capsules. I need to figure out where all my time capsules are. So when you made a time capsule, you would take something that was very important to you, right? And you would put it inside some sort of container. And then you would dig a hole. Pastor Kevin, I'm, I'm preaching. Boy, it is good. Can we get the CD? Can I, I need to watch the live. This is good right here. In a time capsule, we would dig a hole, put valuable things into the ground with the expectation that one day I'm going to come back to that valuable thing and it'll be more valuable. This is the picture of a seed. That before time began, God took something very, he, he not only, listen, he not only created you, formed you, the Bible says he blew the breath of life into you. And with that breath of life was the inception of seed. And that seed has capacity for your future. What's that mean? Well, well, well hear me right here. A seed is not a seed. A seed is not fruit. A seed is not a tree. A seed is not roots. A seed is not branches. A seed is not a garden. A seed is not an orchard. A seed is a forest. Everything you need to build a forest. Everything you need to build a forest is, is encapsulated in that seed. 
Now, the, the most beautiful thing is the bigger the seed, the bigger the fruit. I could deal with this. and I, I, But I need you to understand this because God has encapsulating some things. And you think because you see it, because it's just lying there dormant, and you can see it with your natural eye, that you don't realize how powerful that that. You don't realize. I'm going to tell this side. This side is. They're getting it. You don't realize how valuable what God has put down on the inside of that seed is. You don't realize the value because you look at it and what, the seed is in what they call dormant stage. Okay? That means that there is everything that's supposed to be on the, on the seed is on the inside of the seed. Everything that God said was in there is on the inside of the seed. But there are certain things, certain attribute, attributes that will make that seed grow. And if you don't put it in the right environment, if you don't put it with the right kind of trouble, if you don't put it with the right kind of rain, if you don't put it with the... Then you'll never see the fullness of what that seed could be. You keep wondering why you got to go through what you're going through. Why you got to deal with what you're dealing with. And God said that I'm about to activate something on the... I, you don't realize there's a future, a hope and a future on the inside of you. He said, I'm giving you a hope and a future and an expected end. But it's dormant. So I put Sheila on your job. So she could activate... I made Albert your manager so he could activate something on the inside of you. And instead of running away from it, say, Lord, activate me, Lord, activate me, Lord, activate me, Lord. Because what, what, I, what I don't realize is that I, I can speak, I can speak, I can speak to something where there is nothing and see something get created. Are y'all with me today? But if there is something, if there is anything there, then God will say, no, 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 I'm not going to create a new thing where there is a thing. You need to reproduce after your own kind. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, what's that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, there is no more artificial inseminations. You're going to have to do something. All the kids in children's church, right? There is no accidents. You did something. It's not arbitrary. And if that's true about, if that's true about life, it's true about everything. You're gonna have to activate a seed. There's something, there's something alive. God said, it, God says, listen, if, if it's not enough, it's a seed. If it's not enough, it's a seed. If it's not enough, I need you to understand that everything in this world, everything in this world that God puts in seed form can be reproduced. And oftentimes what you're praying for and begging for, God says you have the ability to reproduce. Okay. He who wants friends should show himself friendly. Pastor Dante, I just don't have no friends. You're just not friendly. You have the ability, you have the ability to reproduce out of your own kind. But just like with that baby, you're gonna have to do something. It might cost you a Starbucks coffee. That's not bribery, that's seed. It might cost you to reach out. I don't think she like me. Reach out to her. That's not being weak. That's seed. God has called me to put seed down in the ground. God has called you to put seed down in your ground. And in any place that you are lacking, hear me right here. In any situation that you are lacking in, God said, here, here's the place where I need you to sow. Because whatever you sow... You grow. 
Whatever you sow, you grow. Let me deal with this real quick. Whatever you sow, you grow. And some of y'all are angry about what you've grown. Some of y'all are mad at God about what you sowed. He didn't do it, you sowed it. You mad because he didn't chop down the tree that you spent all that time planting? If you want to see a new harvest, you have to plant a new seed. You can't have sown evil and sown evil and sown evil and sown evil and and then turn around and say, I'm going to church today. And think that you're not going to eat some of that that you... Oh, they're not preaching this, mama. Everybody's not preaching this right here. Yeah, God can fix it. God can change it. Grace abounds. Yes, but yeah, you're going to have to chop down some trees. You sowed all these weeds. You sowed all this bad financial behavior. You sold it. You sold it. You sold it. You in debt. God, we want a debt release. We're going to have a debt release service. Everybody bring their debts to the altar. We're going to pray over them and get them released. You know you know who wants debt, re debt release all the time? People who don't pay their bills. I don't want to have a debt release ceremony because some people owe me money. And I want all of mine. <laughs> but grace abounds. Grace abounds. So, so it's the place where I sow seed that I should have expectation that God, oh man, there's that word. That I should have expectation that God is going to deliver on, on, not just on his promise. Because understand something, his promise was that my seed would be perpetual. He is the, he is, he is the principle, but, but sowing and reaping is a principle. Okay. So two types of principles. This is, this is what they call a homophone. There's two words that sound exactly alike, but they have different meanings. Okay. Okay. A homophone or homonym, which, whichever one you want is either di spelled differently, but it's still the same sound. The same sound, but has a different meaning. Now, Pastor Dante, what, where are you going with this? Okay, God is the principal, P-A-L. He's the responsible party. Does that make sense? But his law is principal, P-L-E. Now, the principal is not going to go against the principal. Whatever he set into motion in Genesis is still in motion right now. Remember, remember, he said you will, you will give birth in pain. Do it still hurt to give birth? Just, am I, I mean, I, I wouldn't, it seemed like though, because the Prince of Paul is true. Okay. Are y'all with me today? And so God is so good. He is so good that whatever he set into motion is still into, in motion. They say the, the Big Bang Theory, all of a sudden, bang, and then every, the universe started expanding at thousands of miles a minute. Yes, bang, here we go. Let there be, bang. But the, the beautiful thing about God is that he's not going to step out and interfere with what's in motion. Oh, Pastor Dante, this is hard. Yes, it is. Because you, 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 what, what you're going to have to do is set some new things in motion. The principal is not going to get in front of the principal. The principal, principal, P-L-E. I know I'm, it sounds like P-U-L-L. -L. I'm from the East Terrace, so I can't help it. <laughs> principle okay God is too good to step in front of his own word 
whatever he said is true, is true. And he said, whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. He's not going to step in front of what you've sown. Prince of power is not going to say The principle is true. This is the beautiful thing about principle. It's true whether you believe it or not. There's another principle. It's called gravity. You can't. You sit up there. Oh, I don't believe in gravity. Okay. Jump in. The principle will prove itself true. I don't believe in gravity. Okay. Jump. But what you need to understand is that the principle is true when it comes to sowing and reaping. Whatsoever man soweth, that also shall he reap. And what you have to do is figure out how to sow some new stuff so you can grow some new stuff. Do y'all understand? Now, when I, when, I, when I sow some new stuff, then the principle, oh, Jesus. Then the, then the principle, prince of pool, prince of pool, now this is, now we're in the homonym. Prince of, Prince of Pool, Prince of Pool. If I obey, obey the Prince of Pool, then the Prince of Pool comes into play. What's that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, I'm just going to start pulling blessings towards me because I sowed good. Now the pool is happening. So I sowed good in this area. Now the pool is happening. And I was nice to her. And all of a sudden, maybe she didn't have the capacity, the seed, to be nice to me. But all of a sudden, people start being nice to me because I pulled kindness toward me. Oh, y'all not hearing me today. When you are kind to somebody, you pull kindness back towards you. When you are loving to somebody, you pull love back towards you. When you are peaceable with somebody. You pull peace. It's a prince of pool. Some of us are mad about things we sowed. I want you to get this in your heart. Financially, hear me right here. Y'all knew it was coming. You're angry about your financial situation. You sowed it. So how do I sow a change? How do I get the pull in my life? How do I get the, how do I, well, I sow a seed. If it's not enough to meet a need. Now, whatever I want to see, that's what I sow. Because everything I sow grows, grows after its own kind. Does that make sense? So if I want to see kindness, then I sow kindness. Right? If I want to see honor. Oh, I wish I could help a young minister right now. If I want to see honor, I sow honor. All of a sudden, people start honoring me. I didn't even do nothing. But I sowed it, and now it's towards me. The Bible, Proverbs says, he, he who waters will be himself watered. Now, this is my problem. You keep expecting to be watered in the place where you're watering. I don't know how that works. You can't get under what you're, what's under you. Pastor Dante, what does that mean? What are you even talking about? Well, 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 you keep saying, I did this for her and she didn't do nothing for me. The water can't come from her. She might not have the capacity to give you the water. But I sow right here and then I pull something from over there. I sow right here and I pull something from over there. And all of a sudden I find myself water. I don't know what I did or how I did it, but all of a sudden blessings start coming. And it's all because I, it's because of what I, it's because of what I sow. I have a question for you today. What, what are you sowing? What are you sowing? Because I promise you, you're going to grow it. You need more love, be more loving. You don't have any friends, show yourself friendly to somebody. Take them out, buy the whole dinner, don't go Dutch. Uh, she had the calamari and uh, I had the 
I just drunk water. I just drunk water. No. No. I think that's why people invite me to dinner, because they know I'm going to pick up the ticket. I'm just going to grab it. Huh? Me and my, I told y'all, me and my, one of my pastor friends, Pastor Jewel, Pastor Jewel's so good, he'll pay the ticket before you even get to the restaurant. You'll finish your meal, you'll be like, thank you, Jesus. All right, man, we'll take the ticket. She said, no, it's taken care of. Jubal! <laughs> he'll be the left. All the people still sitting around, it's gone. It, it, because he's not going to miss the opportunity to sow into that moment. Especially when, the, I'm going to talk about this next week, especially when the ground is fertile. Because the, f the first conversation is about seed, but the second conversation is about ground. Ground. You know what Adam means? Ground. Dirt. Next week we'll talk about Adam because that's what it means, dirt. That should be good news for some of us though because we got enough dirt. <laughs> we got enough. All we need is some seed because it's dirt. I am dealt with the dirt. I, I, I found places. I find people that they think it's, people think it's funny. They put it on Facebook. Everything. Oh, Pastor Dante bought me some shoes, or Pastor Dante bought me this, or bought me that. I, I don't, I'm a giver. I'm a sower. God added the ER to my name, and this is what I do. And what I'm saying is, hear me right here, because I need you to understand that when you grab this principle, when you get a hold of this principle, all of a sudden you'll start pulling blessings toward you. So I want to ask you to do something today. Don't, don't, don't. Or better yet, I'm going to ask you to not do something today. Because if you, if you, if you, the Bible talks, talks to us about giving cheerfully. I'm going to ask you to prepare your offering today. Whatever offering you intended to give in the first place. But what I am going to say is this, find somewhere to sow into a moment. Find somewhere to sow into a moment. I'm going to ask you something. Most of y'all got envelopes somewhere. If you don't have an envelope, somebody's going to come up, stand up. Uh, the offering team is going to have an envelope ready for you. I just want you to write on the back of that envelope what this seed is for. What you're sowing into. Now, some of y'all, this is your regular offering, amen, this is your regular tithe. Even if you tithe online or whatever, just write on the envelope and drop it in the thing. Don't write God an IOU. I want, I want you to sow into a moment today. And I want you to watch and see what your seed does. Listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to keep it really 100 with you. I don't need a thing. This is not for me. Don't write my name on the envelope. All, all proceeds of this offering will go to God Chasers Church. Not a dime will go to me at all. But it'll only go to God Chasers so we can sow into other people's lives. But, it, but forget what it's for. That's principal. Stop worrying about principal. Focus on principal. Are y'all with me today? Stop, stop worried about, that'll get you messed up, principal. I shouldn't, I, I gave it to him and he did whatever with it. I did this. No, no, no. I, I was talking to a relative of mine. They said, I'm going to stop sowing. Because I keep sowing to people and they, they, they not giving me my money back. You're not sowing, you lending. That's not sowing. When I sow, I just scatter seed. I just scatter seed. And then whatever grows, I expect it to grow. Whatever doesn't grow, it, whatever gets choked out, whatever gets burnt up, it just got burnt up. That's how you sow. But I want you on the back of that envelope. So write, fill it out the way you fill it out. But on the back of that envelope, I want you to write what you're sowing for. Now, hear me right here. Some of y'all need to sow for finances. You in that place. I'm trying to help you right here. You're thinking about Christmas and what's going to happen and all this stuff. And what I'm telling you right here is that 
start a new start a new forest start a new if you want a new harvest plant a new seed watch what God does with it watch what God does with it it's a step of faith it's a Polaroid you are encapsulating something in your future hear me right here you are you are encapsulating a space and time where this seed doesn't hurt you. What does that mean, Pastor Dante? I, I'm going to sow right now, and it's going to hurt because this is where I am financially. But I'm sowing into a place where it won't hurt. Where this is nothing. This is not a thing. This is what I give to somebody on the side of the road. I'm sowing into that place. And then what we're going to do is, as a team, as a, our, our worship, uh, excuse me, our uh, charisma team, we're going to bring all these envelopes out after we get your personal information off of them. We're going to bring all these envelopes out and we're going to pray over them. We're going to join in faith with you. We're going to join in faith with you about whatever you're praying about. Because some of y'all, you're sowing $50, $100, $500, but you're sowing it for, a, a, for what God is going to do in your future. God, I need this. I need, I need, I need that. I'm in trouble with my house note. I, I, I got this situation. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pray with you over that. We're going to join in faith with you over that. And then what I want you to do is come back and testify. Come back and testify about it. Now, here's, where, here's my disclaimer. They don't say this at no other church. I'm going to say it right now. If, if, if you have a bad taste in your mouth right now, throw that envelope away. Because Jesus would say this. Your faith has made you whole. It's not the act. It's your faith. And if you're not cheerful about it, man, hey, keep it. Eat it. I'll wrap it up right here. I, I was talking to uh, Dante outside. Uh, Minister Dante, not myself. Although, you walk up on me at the right time, you might find me talking to Dante right here. Dude, you got this. Come on, get up. Get ready. It's time to go. Come on, come on. Get dressed. Here we go. But he said something so significant to me, and I told him I wasn't going to give him credit for it, but I, I, I am. He said this. He said, he said, he said, he said, Pastor Dante, we don't know what's going to happen when we do something but we do know what happens when we do nothing I almost fell out I don't know what's going to happen Jamon when I do something but I know already what it looks like for me not to do nothing and some of y'all you know what it looks like already I don't have to tell you anything but man the Bible says he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He, he, he won't leave you hungry. He won't leave you hungry. But I don't know about y'all. I'm tired of just getting bread. Because every time I get bread, I got to beg again for bread. Give me this day my daily bread. Okay, God, I wake up again. I need more bread. God, please give me a little more bread. I need a little more bread. Some of y'all, you should be tired of begging for bread. You should want to switch to being a sower. Because the Bible says he gives seed to the sower. When I become a sower, all of a sudden I don't have to beg for bread. I have enough seed. Oh, hear me right here. I have enough seed. I have a forest. Again, love, kindness, friendship. So today. So today. Start today. Call them today. Fix it today. Whatever you want to see, you got to sow. Are y'all with me today? Come on, we're going to take up today's offering. Real quick, let me pray over this. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We give you glory and honor, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for the seed. I pray for the seed. I pray for the seed. I pray for the seed that's being sown on today, Lord Jesus. Lord, I know some people wrote some things on the back of their envelopes, God, and I join my faith with them, God. As a priest, God, I join my faith with them, Lord Jesus, saying, God, you do it. You fix it. You turn it around. Lord, $15 can't change nothing. You changed it. $50 can't change nothing. You $100 can't change nothing. You change it, God. You fix it. You turn it around. I, we are sowing in faith, God, that you will bring a difference, God, that you'll turn it around. 
for doing that today. In Jesus' name, bless this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Ushers, y'all can go ahead. Y'all can go ahead. Come on, sow into this moment. Sow into this moment. They, they have options to give online. You do, do whatever you do. Do whatever you do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on. And then once you've sown, once you've sown, do me a favor, just stand up. Just stand up and let's just, let's just give God glory. Come on. Open up your mouth and just say, God, we give you glory. We want more of you, God. We want more of you, God. We want more of your spirit, God. We want more of your essence, God. We want more of you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.